The DJI M30 series was introduced as part of a new user-centric system targeted towards today's heroes and inspection professionals. This flagship drone filled a gap in the enterprise lineup that provides exceptional capabilities with a user-friendly workflow that can literally fit in a backpack. In this video about the M30, I'm gonna show you some examples of how industry professionals like construction engineers and public safety officials can use it to be more effective and efficient. We're also gonna take a quick look at the Flight Hub 2 software. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, Russ here. Thanks for stopping by to learn more about DJI's newest flagship enterprise drone, the Matrice 30. Now there are two use cases that I wanna demonstrate for you today to show you how this drone can potentially be used to save lives. Now, if you haven't yet watched my first comprehensive review of the M30 series, I'll put a link to it right up here in the corner and in the video description down below. I highly recommend that you do watch that first and then come back here and watch this one. So first of all, I wanted to visit with some people who build big things, <laughs> things like roads and bridges, levees and schools. And I wanted to see how they use drones in their workflow and then get their thoughts on the M30T. So I went to visit a regional civil engineering and architectural firm, and we talked about some of the projects that they have done in our community. Now, they actually have a Matrice 600 in-house, but it pretty much just sits on the shelf because they usually reach for their Phantom 4 Pro when they want to complete some documentation work or inspection type things. So basically, does your Matrice 600 just sit in the, on the counter? Unfortunately, <laughs> it does most of the time. Kind of overkill, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it was originally purchased, uh, we had a dedicated, a fairly dedicated UAV GIS specialist on okay. staff, yeah. and and so he and he was a he's a retired helicopter pilot, yep. so he uh, he was obviously very into it, um, and so they they kind of dove in head first with it, sure, um, and he was looking at doing some of those other applications with it, okay, um, and Weston and I have kind of picked it up from that. And uh, like I said, we're using it for un unfortunately more the more mundane purposes. Right. Yeah. And we're using mostly the Phantom Four for. One of the biggest issues with the Matrice Six Hundred is what it takes to set up, and learn how to fly, and then fly. Plus, it really is overkill for most users. You know, unless you have a dedicated drone pilot that's going to be using it on a regular basis almost every day, the average employee is not going to want to fly it. And I, and I think that's the case with this firm. You know, convenience and usability is huge, especially when it comes to employees wearing several hats in organizations. And so for most companies, that person or people that use drones are also engineers or designers or they hold some other kind of job title. And the ones that fly the drones mostly are chosen to do so because they have some interest in it and they've been volunteering to do it. Now, of course, that isn't the case for all companies, but I certainly think it's more likely in smaller firms. So anyway, first of all, we spent some time in the office and we talked about the drone. I showed them everything that it can do. And, and then we went outside and uh, it just demonstrated everything that the M30T could do. And I also gave them a chance to fly it. So Weston and Kevin, who do the drone flying for their company, were very impressed at how simple it was to fly as well as how powerful the camera system is. So that's the idol, huh? That's the idol. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it either. When it was when the first time I heard it, I'm like, really? Wow. Is it running? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's on a 20X. And this goes up to what again? 200. That's insane. 200 digital. It's only 16 optical. But even at 40, like right now we're at 48 and it looks great. I could uh, read those signs. Yeah. That's... Wow. Now there's about a 30 mile per hour wind that day as well. So they got to experience how stable it flew in those conditions. So I demonstrated the zoom capabilities as well as the thermal camera. Now, Weston mentioned how useful that thermal camera would be in so many use cases, including bridge inspections for one. We had talked about getting into was uh, bridge deck inspections. Like we've oh. we've done a we've done some bridge, well, some bridge work, yeah. um, in places where you have to do like repairs on the bridge deck. The the method that we use to check the bridge deck for like uh, spalling or cracking on the concrete is dragging chains across the concrete. Oh, and really? It, it sounds hollow where there's a bad spot. Oh, sure. Um, 
Yeah. Whereas I, I did watch a couple of videos where some people are testing using thermal imaging on a bridge deck. Oh. And uh, those bald spots will be It'll different be temperature different temperatures. Yeah, that makes the sense. Surrounding areas, and it might be. Yeah. And, it, and then if you could map them, like on there. Yeah. You know, like put all the dots where yep. every every and then spot they could is. go right to them. Yeah, and because the problem with chaining is you have to shut down lanes of traffic. Right. And then like on the Broadway Bridge, we did it. Yeah. You had to shut down one to two lanes of traffic or whatever, you know, just to just to go out there and do it. It's labor intensive, and it requires the constricting of the highest traffic artery in town. Plus, it requires someone with the experience and the knowledge of what those anomalies sound like. So there's quite a bit of subjectivity with this method, and it also takes a very well-trained ear. With something like the M30T and its high-resolution thermal camera, these spots could be located with precision and would allow for traffic to flow normally. You wouldn't have to shut anything down. Plus, it would save on labor costs and it would be much safer. So what I did, actually, when I was done visiting with them, I went out to the bridge and I actually found a hot spot as I was doing my own kind of mock thermal inspection. So is this a spot that requires attention? I have no idea, but I bet when these two guys watch this video, they'll know if it's something that they should investigate further. And then also thermal inspections are not the only method that the M30T could be useful for when it comes to infrastructure. And we discussed that. The use cases are pretty much endless and the time saved could be astronomical. This drone can fit into places that humans could never reach, providing a more comprehensive look at the entire structure in great detail. Now, the other benefit of the M30T that we talked about is how that zoom lens could be used to inspect in less than ideal conditions, like very windy days, because you could maintain a safe distance away from objects, yet still acquire high resolution images. Safety for the crew and safety for the community are two major benefits of using the M30T for infrastructure inspections. So also when I was done visiting with them, I took the drone out and I just kind of drove around town and I did some mock inspections of like a water tower, of a communications tower, some more bridges in town. You can see this one right here. This is a walking bridge that crosses the river and it's been closed for obvious reasons. And here's an example of why this bridge is closed, but it was really cool that I was able to stay pretty far away from that bridge and be able to zoom in and see that kind of detail. Now, the next thing that I really wanted to dig into is how using this drone with its thermal capabilities could aid public safety officials in locating a lost or missing person. Yes, the obvious capabilities are the thermal camera and the rapid response time, but I think the biggest strength of the M30 series, besides its portability, is its ability to fly in nearly any weather conditions. And when the weather is bad, it adds to the complexity of a search and rescue. So I had one of our rural firefighters join me for a short demonstration of the thermal capabilities of the M30T. And we did a mock search and rescue with my two sons. I instructed the boys to walk out into the trees and basically try to hide, like they were kind of trying to run away from home or something. What's that hot spot to your lower left screen on the thermal? Right there, right kind of in the middle there. Uh, that's, well, in right here? That's, that's the sun reflection. Nope, it was in the woods. Oh. Kind of panned over it, go to your upper right relative. Right in there, I seen it. Switch to video. Don't see anything on the video side though. There's just like a kid-sized hotspot right there. There's a tire. Yep. <laughs> And I will tell you this, it's not as easy as you would think to find two little heat signatures. It took a long time before we were able to locate them. And that's even when I sort of knew the area that they would be in. All right, and there we have our missing children. <laughs> I couldn't imagine how challenging it would be if we needed to search like a five mile radius for someone or something even bigger than that. Now keep in mind, I am in no way trained in any of this. Everything that you see me do here is me doing this for like the second time. So it's pretty obvious that I'm 
doing these things as pretty much a beginner. And I wanna put that out there so I don't get shredded in the comments for not knowing what I'm doing when I do these inspections. I can tell you how much more respect I have for people that do this on a regular basis. And one thing that I really appreciated was having Stefan viewing what I was viewing at the same time and having that full situational awareness. Having those two sets of eyes on a search is a game changer. And that's why Flight Hub 2 would be instrumental in leading to a successful search and rescue. You could have multiple people viewing the images as they are live streamed from the drone, increasing the likelihood of seeing something that matters. So Stefan's iPad, we weren't able to do any screen recording on it, but he did capture a few screen captures, some screenshots of our search. So here's a few of those. Flight Hub 2 is just so incredible, you guys. And I wanted you to see how well it actually works. So I went back out and I flew again and I created a new project and then I connected as a team member with my iPad under another account. So on your left-hand side of your screen is my iPad screen, my screen capture from that. And then on the right-hand side is the M30T screen. So I did a screen recording of the RC Plus controller and so you can see everything that I see with the drone, any member of the team can see on their device what I'm viewing, you know, the map view, the camera view, all of the stats, all the locations. It's live streaming the entire time. And then you can also switch the drone camera to view full screen if you want to. So if you're using like a smaller screen. So let's say a pilot creates a section that he thinks is of interest and he maps it out on, on his drone, on the RC Plus. And then this area will be instantly seen by the team members. And then as the pilot navigates to something of interest in that area, that area of interest can be pinned that exact location with GPS coordinates. So, and then that pin can be opened by any team member and the coordinates are right there. So they can navigate to that location and further investigate on, on the ground what exactly that pilot saw from that location. And then also any photos or videos taken can be saved to the assets folder to be viewed by the team or reviewed at a later time for further analysis. And I can't imagine how useful this would be for like law enforcement, like if they're in pursuit of a suspect on a dark and stormy night, the perp would have zero chance. Now I actually have a meeting with some law enforcement that are considering getting a Matrice 300 until they saw my video on the M30T and now they're reconsidering because of the usability, the lower price, the rapid launch time and the weatherproof design. It fits everything that they're looking for for thousands of dollars less than the Matrice 300. So the M30 series continues to impress me every time I fly it or demonstrate it to someone. The fact that I could just show Stefan just a few minutes of how to fly the M30T and he has never flown a drone before and then be able to catch on and just fly it after 10 minutes speaks to the user-centric design of this drone. Now, if you guys have any further questions about the M30 series, let me know down in the comments. I do have at least one more video coming on this drone. And if it's a question that you have that I can't answer, I can certainly reach out to my contacts at DJI and get the answers to all of your questions. Also follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm posting a lot of fun extra stuff on the M30 series that I'm not posting here on the channel. So be sure to follow me there as well. I do wanna thank you for watching this video. Have a great day, everyone. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.